Hey guys, what's up? It's Finch here. Today we're going to be discussing some really underrated Pokemon in the OU metagame. We're going to be discussing six Pokemon that are listed in lower tiers or do UBL, but aren't quite OU by usage and really should be in my opinion. So we're going to go in order with the first Pokemon being the Pokemon that I believe should be the most OU, something that should see well over the 4% threshold of usage. And then as we work our way down to get the Pokemon that are more fringe, maybe you could argue could be close, but not quite there. I don't know, I'll we'll have to wait and see, but I got a list of six Pokemon for you and we're going to go through them one by one. Number one is going to be Weavile. Weavile is going to be the Pokemon that I believe should be the most UU of the Pokemon that aren't quite there. Right now, unfortunately, it doesn't have the usage just in underused borderline due to being banned, but we've seen a ton of it, especially prior to Zamazenta and Crown Band, but even then, a um, revitalization movement with low kick on choice banded variants, which two Kyo's Zamazenta and Crown, is very much present, especially in the higher portions of the ladder right now. Weavile with the Choice Bandit set is very strong. It is a great dual stab combination with Dark plus Ice type, both of which have amazing coverage. For example, Ice is able to hit Pokemon such as Landorus T and Garchomp, which are very common in right now. And then you have resistances like Steel types, which all are going to love taking Knockoff, of course, right? No, not quite, unfortunately. Knockoff is a good spare to kill on things like Heatran and absolutely decimating special walls like Blissey. In addition to this, other special walls like Clefable might think, oh, I can switch into knockoff comfortably, but it's going to be doing 30 to 35%, and Ice Loot Crash could even 2 it out comfortably, given the common move threats on that. Finally, while you do have some safe switch-ins in the tier, things such as Bisharp can tank two hits, and in addition to that, Melmetal is um, avoiding 2 it from it in all likelihood, not to mention Toxic and Nurse for Rapid Strike, those Pokemon are all vulnerable to other things such as entry hazards, future site support, and so on. Things that you can find commonly on teams with Weavile, therefore making it a very um, hard Pokemon to keep in check. Weavile also has access to a Sword Dance set. I thought that set was even better than the Choice Bandit set prior to Zombies into Crown being retested. Admittedly, now we've seen a bit of a shift in the viability, but I think that's fine. I have no quarrels with that. Either set is very good in my opinion. It should be OU by usage either way. Um, in the later stage of Smogon Premier League, the big OU tournament started the year. We saw a ton of Weavile and then the latter a couple weeks behind a bit but still definitely saw that reflected in its uses as well. But all in all, Weevil is a great option against offense and bulky offensive teams, and it can even hold its own as a potential breaker and um, a really great at displacing items against balance teams as well. Weevil's great speed, coupled with its amazing dual stabs, makes up for some shortcomings in the bulk department, as well as with a poor defensive typing and weakness to Stealth Rock. And given all of this and some more as its priority, again, knockoffs utility covered with low kick, it should be OU in my honest opinion. Also, Dark types, you can never use enough of them. It gives you a resistance to Ghost type and Immunity to Psychic type, two very prevalent types in the competitive Pokemon game right now. Finally, with the Ice typing, it's also resistant to Ice, which is very important. Speaking of Ice resistances, the next Pokemon on my list is going to be Scizor. Scizor is a Pokemon that, in my opinion, should also be OU. In fact, ever since the rise of Curum, which arguably happened with the bands of Cinderace and Magirna, we saw more and more and more Scizor. And it's funny because not only do we see with those bands with Cinderace and Magirna, a Pokemon that absolutely invalidated Scizor and Cinderace get banned, but also a fellow Steel type, Magirna, get banned, therefore making it slightly less competitive in the Steel type uh, Steel type game in OU, therefore giving Scizor more room. That coupled with the fact that these Pokemon getting banned opened up the door for things like Curum, things like Kartana, made it so that Scizor's natural Steel plus Bug typing was very practical in the OU metagame. This coupled with it having quite a few utility moves, be it U-turn to generate momentum, knock off to displays items, bullet punch for priority, and Sword Dance to boost attack potentially, made it so that Scizor had a lot of viability in OU. While predominantly used especially defensive sets top wall things like Top Boop Lele and Curum, it also can run other things as well, being an offensive soft check to things like Rillaboom, and having the ability to resist typings like Fairy and Psychic, while also being resistant to Freeze Dry plus Ice Beam, a combination that very few things can claim to resist makes it very practical, and Bullet Punch can be super helpful against a hyper-offensive matchup at the right time. Finally, while Scizor can run more defensive sets like the one we're seeing here, or potentially even with U-Turn over Knockoff or Sword Dance, it can also run more offensive Sword Dance 3 attack sets, particularly with a Life Orb, when seen on hyper-offensive teams. Admittedly, it, they are seen few and far between in this metagame right now, but in a metagame where Rillaboom is a bit more prevalent, which I imagine we'll probably be seeing eventually just because Rillaboom always comes back a little bit, it's on the down low right now, but it's coming back, don't you worry. <laughs> Um, Scizor will probably search up and use this again. It is worth noting that it does face some competition with Zamazenta and Crown, but ultimately their overlap isn't 100%, it's just partial. Finally, this Pokemon also benefits future side support from things like Slowking and Slowbro, due to the fact that Toxics is pretty good against it, but that combination can be quite potent, so keep that in mind as well. 
Next up, we have another top Pokemon that is bugging out in the OU metagame. Some pun intended. Buzzwall is going to be third on our list here, and I really like offensive Buzzwall as it combines a great offensive and defensive presence. Naturally, defensively, it's able to check things like Swords Dance Garchomp, Swords Dance Landorus T, any extra drill really beyond, say, Steel Beam lead extra drill. You don't want to face that <laughs> due to low special bulk. But needless to say, that Pokemon has been not um, really seen for a long time now, so worry not, for real. Um, anyway, it also is good against the grass types like the aforementioned Rillaboom and Kartana. And this all coupled with the fact that it hits like an absolute truck. You see this base attack stat, that's 139, 139. That is hella high. That is also good against Zombies in the Crown, by the way, which has helped revitalize Buzzwall. I'm aware that unfortunately it kind of has this little um, predicament where it can't cover everything. Without Leech Life, it can't hit Slowbro and Slow King. Without Earthquake, it can't hit Toxic. Without Ice Punch, it's going to struggle against the ground types like Landorus, T, and Garchomp, which I just alluded to doing well against. And oftentimes, Clefable is never going to be covered. But with Clefable running more specially defensive sets, Close Combat can do a kill out from like 80%, which is pretty impressive. And with Future Sight support, you can invalidate things like Tox Specs and other things as well. In addition to that, Buzzwall still offers a great defensive utility, even in games where it's not offensively very good, and this makes the match against Hyper Offense much more improved than it otherwise would be. All in all, Buzzwall is a really underrated Pokemon in my eyes, and I argue Sue is on the fence with putting it above Scizor, but we've seen more Scizor usage. I do think Buzzwall might be the better Pokemon, though. So yeah, definitely try Buzzwall out on your teams. Next off is going to be Barascuda, perhaps one of the main faces of the Rain archetype. Well, we have seen a revolving doors for swimmers, including Pokemon like Kingdra and Seismitoad, Barascuda has arguably been close to staple status on everyone's favorite hyper offensive style that involves weather because sun teams are spawned from the devil. Jokes aside though, I don't like sun very much right now unfortunately. I feel as if it's very inconsistent. Heatran didn't help it. And of course we're still seeing like the teleport blue seeing the drag pult shenanigans oftentimes and even sand teams are pretty decent right now. So sun struggles but rain has a bit um a bit less challenging of a time adapting to those Pokemon, those things that has more interchangeable pieces and covers them naturally better as well. Thanks to Pokemon like Barascuda and Seismitoad, which I just alluded to. In fact, Barascuda also just completely invalidates the opposing offense when used in rain. Liquidation plus close combat has amazing coverage as is, really just only missing out on Slowbro and Tox Specs, which again, you don't see those much on offensive teams. Aqua Jet Priority can also come in clutch at the right time, and Flip Turn to generate momentum, open the door up for fellow Pokemon that are trying to abuse the rain, can go a long way as well. Of course, Barascuda is only worth using on your rain teams, and that's why it's listed lower in this list, and that's why it fell to RU, because rain teams haven't seen as much steady usage lately, and it's not even on 100% of rain teams, maybe it's on 65% of rain teams, let's say. So therefore, Barascuda's viability has kind of faulted down to the fringe tier, but we're talking Pokemon that should just barely be OU, and as Pokemon that's listed as RU right now, it's definitely going to give it a run for its money. Speaking of Pokemon currently listed as RU, next up is going to be Zarude. While Zarude is really going to be struggling in the metagame with Zonos Underground, I think in the metagame prior, it was actually doing pretty damn well. While it did struggle with the Iron Defense, Steel plus Flying types like Corviknight and Skarmory, and the addition of things like Hurricane Zapdos to the metagame were not particularly friendly to it, there are some trends that favor it. For example, we've not seen any type of Wulu, and the Tengrith we do see don't really have much of a means of touching it. That coupled with the fact that we are seeing less and less physically defensive haze tox specs, which that coupled with, say, a Tornadus T or a Zapdos can't spell doom for it, really halting its progress. And in addition to this, ghost types are super good, making it to a dark type is great. Really friendly metagame for Zerud right now prior to the Zombies of the Crown test. And even then, I think it will see some usage afterwards as well. Future Sight support is pretty good for it offensively, but truth be told, defensively, it's a great status sponge and a decent win condition. Finally, the uptick of Special Defensive Clefable as opposed to Physical Defensive Clefable is very friendly to Zerud as well, making it so that Power Up can do a kill even without a boost. Because keep in mind, 120 base special attack, base physical attack, my apologies on that, coupled with a pretty strong base power, power whip off of stab, actually does quite a bit of damage, especially to a special defensive Clefable. So yeah. And finally, sixth and last, but perhaps not least, will be Zapdos Kalar, which is absolutely a fan favorite. I've heard many of you guys um, just fanboying over Zapdos Kalar. You like the design, you like how strong it is, and I get it. Personally, I don't think it's a very good option right now. I think the combination of regenerator cores, being able to scatter the stab move that it locks into, and the prevalence of Rocky Helmet Chip with the lack of recovery make it so that Zapdos Galar is oftentimes limited to maybe one kill max in most games, if even. But with that said, it's great at abusing things like Intimidate from Lander Asterion and giving you a ground immunity on more offensive teams and taking advantage of the prevalence of Defog. If it comes into the right turn, it's going to do an absolute crap ton of damage and very few things while it, especially with Aegislaw seeing less and less usage. While admittedly it is prediction line and it can 
be worn down quicker than you'd like it to be. Zapdos Scalar presents an interesting blend of offensive firepower and defog slash intimidate manipulation that very few Pokemon in this current metagame are able to abuse themselves. Therefore, giving Zapdos Scalar a very unique niche and also some viability that it really um, would not have seen otherwise, and making it just to the tail end of this list. I've included these six Pokemon, but of course, if you want to go down the list, there are some other Pokemon you can give honorable mentions as well. For example, in UUBL, which again, I'm counting is not OU by usage, things like Drakezolt are very viable as well as Victini. I personally think both these Pokemon have a place in OU, Drakezolt of course being used on Sand Teams with Sand Rush, and Victini as more of a heavy duty boots pivot. Finally, of Pokemon in UU, there are some that have been OU previously. Things like Aegislash, Amoongus, Crawdont, and Como all, all can be mentioned on this list. In addition to that, we have seen some Mew, Moltres, Rotom Heat, Rotom Wash, and Tangrowth. All those Pokemon were crossing my mind when coming across this list, even things like Primarina as well. There are some other Pokemon that I thought about, things like Slowbro Galar, even Pokemon that we saw earlier in the metagame like Gastrodon, Marak Alola, and Reuniclus. But none of them really stood out to me enough to make these top six. And because of that, I want to say that while these six Pokemon are six Pokemon that are worth trying in your team, never limit yourself. Always try new things and adventure out. Even if it just means, oh, I tried this for three or four games. It seemed cool. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out. That's fine. The trial and error is totally natural to the team building process and learning how to be a better player. Therefore, don't limit yourself. Always try new things. And if you ever have any questions on what to try, what not to try, feel free to give me a holler down in the comment section in our discord server the link will be down below on twitter the link to that will be down below or on smalgon pokemon show down wherever you can find me i'm always here to help you guys and i hope you guys all have a great week this is a little bit of a sidebar metagame monday off topic fun ou related video i figured i'd pump out admittedly it was a little impromptu i wasn't really sure what to do tonight so if you guys have any ideas for future videos let me know down below in the comment section as well and maybe if i see one to do i'll pick it for tuesday wednesday or thursday in the meantime thank you guys so much for all the support recently and the zombies in the crown and other stuff and I'm looking forward to pumping out more videos for you now. And if you guys have any issues with the sound quality in this video, let me know. Still getting used to a new microphone and new computer. So yeah, it's a process, but so far so good, I think, or so I hope. Either way, guys, have a great day. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and peace out. Okay, later.